Hello, this is Professor James Strickler, and this is a course in American government. This lesson is from Unit 5 about the Executive Branch, and it's Lesson 6 concerning the President's roles in our system of government. In this lesson, you'll learn about the President as an administrator, the President as our chief diplomat, the President as a crisis manager, the President as priority setter, and the President as morale builder for the country. So we've learned a lot in previous lessons about presidential power. Now, in this lesson, we're going to learn about what the citizens of the United States expect the president to do with the powers that the president has been given. To explain that, we're going to go over five separate roles that the president has. The first of those roles is as the executive or administrator for the country. An executive or administrator is the person who carries out the functions of some sort of organization to make sure that things run smoothly in a sense. In our system of government, the Congress is the one that makes the laws, and then the president is assigned the job of faithfully executing those laws. That's what an administrator does, and we expect the president to carry out all the laws that Congress has created. Fortunately for the president, he has a giant bureaucracy of about four million workers to help him carry out the laws that Congress has assigned to him. But even though he's got lots of people to help, it's the president's job to supervise that vast bureaucracy and make sure it does what it's supposed to do. The next job that we expect the president to take care of is to be the chief, chief diplomat for the country. The president has assigned several powers in the Constitution that enables him to fulfill this function as chief diplomat. The Constitution says that the president will make treaties with other countries, appoint ambassadors to represent the United States in those other countries, and receive the ambassadors from those foreign countries also when they come to visit the United States. In these functions, the president then can present a particular face to the world in other words, try to make see the, the other countries and other people of Earth see the, the United States in a certain way. A very obvious example of a president trying to help the world see the United States in a certain way is President Obama's uh, demeanor in his many visits around the world as president of the United States. Here are four photos showing the president in one way or another bowing to dignitaries from other places in the world. Now, the reason that President Obama repeatedly does this is one of his personal beliefs is that the United States has been too much of a bully in its history, that the United States has been too forceful, too arrogant, and in that way has developed a ra bad reputation around the world. So he's very intentionally tried to change that by acting extra respectful to other people around the world. So as he's gone to visit them, he's frequently bowed to them. You can see him here, for example, bowing to some Saudi princes and to the Pope of the Catholic Church. For him, this is a way to demonstrate the United States' humility rather than arrogance. And this is an opportunity for him to shape how other countries around the world see the United States. So this is a function that a president has to be the face of the United States to the rest of the world as the chief diplomat. Now, other presidents have discharged their uh, responsibility in this area in a different way. But this is how President Obama has chose to try to present himself and the United States to other people on the planet. A third role that we expect presidents to fulfill is that of crisis manager. Now, the biggest kind of crisis that a president might face is a war. And the president, as the commander-in-chief of a military with over one million people in it, has a lot of resources to help him fulfill that function of fighting a war if necessary. But there are other opportunities besides just battle for a president to manage a crisis that the public expects the president to deal with. An example in recent American history where a president was perceived as failing in this duty was when Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans. The president at the time, George W. Bush, 
was viewed by much of the public by not having an effective response to this storm, either by preparing people beforehand, making sure they were safely evacuated, or quickly moving in in the aftermath to set things straight. And this uh, perception that he did not act quickly or surely enough dramatically hurt his popularity and uh, damaged his ability to serve as an effective president, or at least at, for, as, as effective in a president as he otherwise would have been. The basic problem is there was a crisis, the people of the country expected him to deal with it, and then when he didn't deal with it up to their expectations, they held it against him. A more minor example of the same thing came when uh, massive flooding hit Louisiana while Barack Obama was president of the United States. President Obama was criticized for being out golfing at the time that Louisiana was flooding. And here's an example of a doctored photo that appeared on the internet showing the president chipping a golf ball off of the roof of a flooded car. This symbolized the frustration that some people had that the president wasn't responding to the crisis at hand. So one of the roles we expect presidents to do in this country is when there's any sort of big crisis, the president better be there trying to deal with it. Another role we expect the president to fulfill is that of priority setter. When a person's running for president of the United States, they will issue a uh, sit, set of position statements uh, where they say what they intend to do as president on various issues. This is sometimes called their campaign platform. The idea is they're trying to let the country know what they want to do as president if they are elected to that office. Then once they come into office, they use a power that we've talked about previously of informally proposing legislation to try to get their ideas to be pushed through Congress. Lots of times they'll try to promote these ideas through the State of the Union address that we've taught, talked about in previous lessons, where they have a large audience all over the country and they can use the bully pulpit to try to promote their point of view. We expect them actually to stand up and do this, to have big ideas to try to make the country better and then try to get Congress to follow them. An example of a president effectively accomplishing this goal was when President Obama, during his first term, pressed for the Affordable Care Act, what's commonly known as Obamacare. Now, when I say this is an example, this doesn't mean that I'm judging whether or not Obamacare was a good idea or a bad idea. That's independent. What I'm saying is it's an example of the president effectively pushing for a set of priorities and getting them actually enacted by the Congress. This is something we expect presidents to do. Well, unless we happen to disagree with the priority the president has, then we get mad about him pressing them. But in general, we want presidents to come in with agendas of what they want done. And then because they won the election, we expect them to actually try to get those things done. A last role that we expect the president to fulfill is that of morale builder. When America is faced with some sort of troublesome situation, for example, the attacks on the World Trade Center on 9-11, we expect the president to step in and give us hope. In the aftermath of the attack on the World Trade Center, President uh, Bush, George W. Bush, who was in office at the time, traveled to New York City to the site of the attack and gave an impromptu speech at the, at the site. Uh, this was carried on television. And a lot of people felt inspired by it, got a lot of hope from it. And they then rallied around the president to support him as he tried to act to, to correct the situation. But that's what we expect presidents to do, is during difficult times to come let us know that things are going to get better and that he's there doing something about it to help us. Perhaps the best example of this in American history is during the Great Depression, when Franklin Roosevelt, the president at the time, use the best available technology radio to reach into people's homes and speak to them on a weekly basis to try to cheer them up and let them know that times were going to get better, that eventually the country would get out of the Great Depression. They just all needed to keep working together. Uh, people who lived at the time, who are still around today that you might have a chance to talk to, will probably speak with reverence about Franklin Roosevelt's speeches families would gather around their radios and feel like he was there in the room with them. 
That's why these speeches were named fireside chats. That was what he was trying to convey. The idea of being there next to them with great sympathy for their needs and a determination to make things better that would then give them hope for the future. Now let's review what we learned in this lesson. Who assists a president as the administrator for the country? Is it Congress? Is it the Supreme Court? Is it the bureaucracy? Or is it the United Nations? It's the bureaucracy, those four million people that work for the president in the executive branch. They assist the president in administering the laws of the country. In what roles the president are faced to the, uh, to the rest of the world? Is it as crisis manager, as chief diplomat, as morale builder, or as a priority setter? It's as the chief diplomat that the president goes out and represents us to the rest of the countries on the planet. Hurricane Katrina was a failure of the president to act in what role? As crisis manager, as chief diplomat, as morale builder, or as priority setter? In the case of Hurricane Katrina, George W. Bush was viewed as failing to fulfill his role adequately as crisis manager. In proposing legislation is what role of a president? Is it crisis manager, chief diplomat, morale builder, or priority setter? Proposing legislation is the example of the president being a priority setter trying to set the agenda for what the country should be trying to do. Finally, Roosevelt's fireside chats are an example of what role? Crisis manager, chief diplomat, morale builder, or priority setter? In the fireside chats, President Roosevelt acted as a morale builder, trying to help the country feel better about what was happening so they could then work together and get out of the problem, which was the Great Depression. That completes this lesson. The next lesson will also be from Unit 5. It'll be Lesson 7 about the presidential ideal.